Hey, we've been working on the coffee darkening for a little while. We are getting it dialed in. I'm liking the process, liking the product. Let's get into it. Getting ready to coffee etch. A fresh blade. Hopes and dreams are it comes out. The first time we changed our process last time and now we are duplicating that process to see if we can get some consistency. Sorry, right, chloride etched it. Got it nice and the proper depth. Buffed it with the red rouge pretty hard. I got some beautiful chatoyants. Put it back on the sanding block gently and carefully with the tape on the backside. Took four out steel wool and just sanded heavily on both sides with the uh, Windex. So we're thinking that'll scratch the uh, carbon up down in the low places so that the coffee etch will have more places to grab to for more contrast in the coffee etch. Stick around, we'll let you know how it comes out. After we buffed it with Red Rouge, we took uh, four out steel wool, put it back on the sanding block, my sanding fixture, used the four out steel wool with Windex and put little micro uh, scratches all over it. So just, you're not going to be able to see them. Little micro scratches that the uh, coffee etching might have something better to grab to for more contrast. We're chilling here in the kitchen, watching some uh, paint dry, so to speak. Coffee etching this blade. It's on the clock, it's on the timer. So we got just a couple seconds left before it goes off. All right, first go around. Clean it off, see what she looks like. Kind of a busy place this morning. Kyle's working in here with ferric chloride and I'm working in here with coffee. Not there yet. First, just the first eight minute edge. It's not going to work yet. It's working towards it for sure. Uh, I'm going to sand it 2500 grit and, and uh, dip her again. Keep going. got back in from the first eight minute session with the coffee stain. Didn't come out the way I wanted it, so I took it back out and buffed it down, cleaned it up, and stuck it back in the tank again. And we'll give it another go around, see if we can get a little look where it needs to be soon. I didn't get any darkening to the degree of even close to what I want, so. I'm gonna scuff it up a little more with some micro scratches and see if we can get that darker, more contrast. Or a copy darkening. Sure. Still? More still? Patient, patiently. Copy darkening. We're getting there. We got some contrast going on. And I got some chitoyance. It's hanging in there. It's looking good. I'm gonna steal wool. Again. I just threw it back in there for a little touch up. And it's, it's coming, so I'm getting ready to pull it out. This might be it. Let's rinse it off, see what it looks like. Burnt. Wobbly. Let's we'll see what the master thinks, Master Obi-Wan. I think it looks good. Let's see what it looks like. Maybe dried off and oiled a little okay. bit. Dried off. We are going to put some Japanese oil on it. Got some awesome chatoyants going on. Love that. Got some pretty good contrast. I like it a lot. Look at the other knife. It came out of the same billet. I'm getting real similar. Read off of it. 
We just pulled this out of the coffee darkening and it is fantastic. We have a lot of chatoyants. I, I don't think we can get any more. I think we maxed out on the chatoyants. And now I've got some bolster action here. I've got a 10-2. I've got to polish this bolster and the spine without touching this beautiful uh, Damascus etch. So normally I just wrap it in paper, or uh, excuse me, I wrap it in tape. This time I'm gonna wrap it in uh, paper towel because I don't want any adhesive. I don't want anything touching that, that coffee etch. So I'm gonna wrap this in paper towel and prepare it and keep it safe while I am buffing and polishing. And I'm gonna wrap this in tape just to make sure nothing happens to that spectacular, beautiful etch job. I'll work on the bolster first, then I'll work my way down the spine after I get the bolster done. And if I do make a mistake, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna cry like a baby, but I can uh, buff it back out and put it back in the uh, coffee darkening. We ended up putting that in overnight. Uh, we, we hung it in a tube of coffee etch overnight at room temperature and that came out beautifully. So we got a, another method that we're going to use with our coffee darkening and we are excited about that. You always got to watch that tip. You don't want to bust it and you don't want it going through you. I am going to respond to all, well, I'm going to try to respond to as many as I can. The responses that you guys give me a shout out on uh, some of the challenges I had with uh, different things and recommendations. We read those, we look at those, so thanks for your, your input. And I'll do my best to respond to those accordingly. And thank you for your critiques and your recommendations. All right, that looks pretty safe. I'm going to come up on this bolster just a little bit uh, with a piece of tape. I just don't want to go anywhere near that. Because I will, I will get into it. I traditionally get into places I'm not supposed to be on finished knives. So I'm going to err on the side of caution. And just do a little whoopie doo on there and make sure I get that protected as much as I can. The handle's protected. I'm going to wrap that because I don't want that getting, if I accidentally drop it, that, that could be a bad thing there. So I'll just wrap that right there at that end. Or my, uh, I don't need that in there. That is what I used to hang the knife in the coffee darkening tube, my PVC tube. This thing's getting ready to go out. It's getting ready to be photographed and, and go out. So, we, all we gotta do is this right here. Finish that in the spine, then sharpen it, and it's out the door. Okay, I'm slipping this back in our knife fixture. This fixture holds the blade because I'm getting ready to buff on my bolster. So I wrapped it up real secure. I got it secured in there. Now I can spin this little rascal around and uh, sand this and we'll see how it goes. It's, it'll hold it, it'll turn it. It's really handy. This is Kyle's fixture for smaller knives. I've got some stock around here for mine. I'm making me a, I'm making me a big one for my kitchen knives. I'll let him have this one back. I'm gonna start with, uh, I'm gonna start with a thousand grit and see what happens. If I have to, I can go down, but if I, I'm gonna stop and start at a thousand, then buff it. I might go 2,500, 15, I don't, I don't know. We'll see. But I'm gonna try to start at, uh, you know what, I'm gonna start at 2,500. Forget that. Let's start at 2,500 and see what happens. And you wanna use a very stiff, this is my uh, denatured file. It's very, it's still a little flexible, but it's, it's stiff for small areas. And I took all the sharp edges off of it, so it works really good. I denatured it in the surface grinder. Took the filing, filings off of it and denatured it. I don't have a better word for it. And I gotta get my magnifier, because I can't see that well. I gotta get my magnifier.
I just got this knife sanded to a thousand grit finish on the bolster. Last I was, uh, I started sanding it and I took it to a thousand grit um, and across the spine and across the back here of the heel. Uh, it came out great. I got it sharpened. It is ready to be shipped. Uh, some of the challenges I had with this knife was the classic uh, dad syndrome. I had a finished blade and I actually just got a small little scuff in it and I had to fix it. So I just sanded it out and re-etch. And the coffee etch is probably our best yet, a coffee darkening. It looks great, lots of contrast, love it. Didn't know about the handle at first, but it really rocks with the vintage micarta and the copper spacer and the thousand grit finished bolster. Feels real good, it's got a really sleek design to it. Uh, the heel height and it's just pretty sleek looking, like it. This knife will be up for sale on the website shortly. If you're interested, check it out. I like the design, I'm gonna build some more like it. I got a request the other day for a paring knife on one of the knives I sold, that black handled one. So I may get into that pretty quick after this. Thanks for watching all the videos. If you like this video, subscribe and like. There's going to be more coming up. This is Dad signing off. See ya.